this is quite a reasonably high mileage van when I bought it. It's got over 200,000 miles on clock. Um, so I, I, I try to keep mileage down here. I don't want to daft journeys. I haven't got any reason to, to be honest. Um, I just want to use it as a camper and not those. Um, but I've had to do obviously a few little journeys and one of the journeys I did to fetch some wood. Um, the service engine light now came on. Um, and also it went into limp mode on the way to picking the wood up. Now on the way back it had, it, it stopped, it didn't do it anymore. So it's not that I thought nothing of it. I knew obviously there's going to be a problem. Um, and this might even be a reason why the van was sold because I couldn't see anything wrong with it and it was a good price. Um, so I come to it the other day and this happened. So I came to the van, opened to pick some wood up this morning and this happened. Saying so this, you know. Got the engine service now light on, but the glow plug isn't coming on. The fact that it's done this before with this engine service now light coming on and it going into um, limp mode, and this time just refusing to turn the engine over, I don't think it can be anything else. Especially with with the you turn the ignition key fully, expecting the engine to start and don't turn over. The lights don't dim. That to me shows that power's not getting to the solar night. Um and it's likely the ECU causing that. So the ECU's relying on a signal from a sensor. I haven't looked on the internet for answers at forums. Generally it all points at one sensor and that is uh, the intercooler sensor on the bottom of the intercooler radiator There's a sensor on the front left of the van it's, it's, it's quite easy to get to when it's only one bolt holds it in Now I've watched a YouTube video of a guy uh, That came to the same conclusion took this sensor out uh, did a multimeter test on it in, uh, and a new part as well so I've got a ballpark figure, I mean watch that video, I've got a ballpark figure for using a multimeter on the new part and the old part. So, the nice thing is to take the old sensor off, I'm actually expecting delivery of the new part today, so hopefully that'll come. So, from the front of the van, I'm at the front left corner, and here we go. If it'll focus, there it is. So just on the top side of that is one bolt. There it is. It needs a T30. It talks. A span, a wrench, whatever. Undo that. That pulls out. I've, I had, I've actually had this out before, so quite easy. Okay, so you can clearly see the hole that this goes into. Because I've got my new one partly in. I think that's it actually. Right, let's give it a go. So pessimistic me is expecting this not to work, but we'll see. Still coming up, so it's not that. So another frustration, but um, it has occurred to me that the fault code might need wiping, even if that sensor is at fault. So it could still be the problem, but the fault code needs wiping. I'm still waiting on the code reader being delivered, 
but the young multimeter has been delivered today. I'm actually using the prongs off the, the contacts of the old multimeter because they're a bit they're a bit thinner, so when I get into it, it's, it's a little bit easier. For this old part, that's showing 1205. Yeah, it's showing about 12. And uh, the ballpark figure I got of the other guy doing a YouTube video, his failed one was something like 2. Point, I don't know, 2.4, and his good one was 14 point something. So really, there's not a lot wrong with this, by the look of things. And now I'm gonna take the old one back off, put this one back on the van, and get a reading for the new one. Okay, so now I've got the uh, new sensor back off the van. Let's get a figure for that. Okay, so that's, right, so that's the new sensor. As in that YouTube video that I watched, the the other guy's new part showed 14 point, I think it was 14.4. This is showing over 14. So there's nothing really. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of reduction on old part, but I don't think it's worth changing for that. Just leave it on and keep this as a spare. So we'll look elsewhere. That's not my problem. So I've had a further look on the internet for different things. And uh, I've also talked to a couple of mates that have either got or had diesel cars and I've got some experience with messing about with them. I've come to the conclusion now that I think it has to be the DPF um, that's clogged up. That is the diesel particulate filter, which is like diesel equivalent of a catalytic converter. The good news is they can be cleaned and you can buy an aerosol cleaner. Disconnect one of the uh, sensors attach the aerosol to, to by this pipe to the dpf spray it all in and then it has to be started to actually do the cleaning process first thing i'm going to do tomorrow is actually jack the van up a bit get to exhaust them out a little bit easier and just prepare the actual sensor that's on the dpf take surface rust off it Put some releasing oil on it and just make sure I can get it out. Just get, get that out first, ready to work on it, and that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. If it's the DPF sensor that's in the engine bay, it'll still be a good move to have this fluid there and use it in any case. So it's not wasted money, in my opinion. So that's my next move anyway. Just keep man up a bit tomorrow and then just wait for stuff to be delivered. So I'm just preparing it that it is actually jacked up. Difficult to tell, but it is. So from the front and side of that. That's the DPF, whatever sensor this one is, I've taken that one out here. I think he wants to put releasing oil on it, it's come out quite easily. That's what I'm gonna put the cleaning fluid in. So I've had this starter fuse out, the solenoid fuse. I've had this solenoid relay out, swapped them both. The ones with the same number, the ones with the same strength, no joy. Well, the fuse out in here that's extremely difficult to get, so I've just pulled it halfway out. That would, that would complete, it didn't look to be anything wrong with that for ignition switch, I was just checking. And now I'm checking the main fuse, and I can't see anything wrong with that. Although I know they can be faulty and visibly look alright, but anyway, I'll put this all back together and get an auto electrician in, because it's beyond me, this problem. And that's batteries back in. I'll take the opportunity to clean everything up, and batteries on charge individually. So I called an, an auto electrician about my non-start issue. Um, partly about the other issue as well, going into limp mode. The guy wasn't keen to come out because he basically stopped doing it. He worked for one company and uh, that would, it stopped actually doing call outs. But it did suggest to me that it could be a contact part from behind the ignition barrel. Now, this is a part of it. Initially, I didn't take too much notice of that um, because when I turned the ignition barrel, the dash lights came on. 
So I thought it was something else. Anyway, I had this apart. I, I took it slightly apart from the vehicle, kept it connected to the wiring, put a pen knife in it, twisted it, and the same result, nothing different. So I took it off. I thought, I'll have it apart and have a look at it, have a look inside of it. You possibly can't tell, but there are little, little tangs there. Uh, what keeps it in place into the, the outer bit. And it, it was clear to me that somebody had had this apart before. So straight away then I'm thinking, well now there's a chance it is this, that there's something wrong with. When I took it apart, everything fell apart on it like a chocolate orange. But that doesn't necessarily mean it was broken. It's just the way it was put together with little springs and stuff. So there were no way of knowing if it was broken before or not. But and I couldn't be bothered to put it back together knowing it had been tampered with before. So I've just ordered a new part, 20 quid. Uh, hopefully that'll cure it. But another thing was, I bought a cord reader and it didn't work. It connected it out to the van, it booted up, it was getting power from the van. But when I put it, the ignition on, it wasn't handshaking with the van. So reading between the lines on a couple of these cord reader reviews, I got the impression it, some of them uh, they like horses for courses. Although they're all supposed to be one way of working, they're not. There's different ways of working, um, and some of them don't work on certain vehicles. So I risked buying a second one. That didn't work either. Which initially I was gutted about that, but when I thought about it, a couple of hours, a couple of hours after, I realised it was another pointer towards this part being no good. The new part's coming today. We'll see what happens. So, my new part's come. And now I'm gonna, if I can, show how quick it is to fit. Right, let's get that way around first. Oops. So yeah, I'll try again. It has to be fitted with the key in. So. That's it. And that goes. That's it. That's it. It's sorted. It's still not worked. I don't believe it. It still hasn't worked. So it's not that. Right. So, so this new part hasn't worked. I am slightly suspicious of this here. So I'm wondering if a fuse has gone that's affecting things. I'll check that out next. So in trying to sort this traction control light out, I uh, just wanted to get one fuse out. If you can see this piece of fuse box here, there's one right up at the top. That purple one stuck out, that all lights on. Now I've put a high profile fuse in to make it easier to get out next time. But I actually, need to get the driver's seat out to get it out. And basically that was the last straw from there. So auto electrician's coming today. Okay, so the auto electrician came, got the van going pretty quickly, narrowed the diagnosis down to it either being the ECU or a wire to the ECU. So they then had to take it in, have a look at it, only a quick look at it, and diagnose it properly. And it is the ECU that's a problem. So I've got a source of ECU and then have them fit it. I mean, I could physically fit it myself, but it needs programming. And I believe what they mean by that is um, the VIN number putting in to the replacement ECU and the odometer reading from this vehicle so, which is something I'm not um, I suppose not allowed to do qualified to do um, and not only that I couldn't have found the problem diagnosing the ECU would, would, would have been beyond me so I did what I could I'm happy that I found the problem with the ignition barrel contacts that were a breakdown waiting to happen so it's really good that I look for it for myself the next thing is cleaning the DPF Yes, I believe that's what we're causing the limp mode running and the engine service now rather than the ECU. I mean, it might have been ECU, yeah, I don't know. But I think probably the DPF. But I'm going to do a clean anyway, so it's not a waste of time. So, so there's no cleaning fluid in the DPF just yet. But this reading at the bottom um, is for the particle filter pressure. And that's showing about... 24, 25 kPa. So 
so we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna put some cleaning fluid in. So to help keep this pipe in the hole, I just made a hole in a little rubber grommet and put it through that. It sticks, it keeps in it quite long. thousand revs. I've put about one and a half cans in. Um, it doesn't seem to drop this figure that much. I'll just wait and see what it's like when it when it drops down to tick over. I'm starting to think there weren't a lot wrong with DPF and it were actually all ECU that were causing problems. Because it's certainly starting better from coal and it's running better from coal as well. Drop down a ticker again, it's now down to about 22. I don't think there was such a lot wrong with, it, with DPF actually. Well, that'll do. So, my uh, replacement ECU came today, and it actually looks particularly clean. It's not bad at all, but it's apparently come off an 80,000 mile vehicle. So, hopefully, no problems with it. So I've just picked the van up from having the new ECU fitted. There's the old one, and it is actually pretty filthy. Not that that's all a guide, but it is filthy. Hopefully I don't have any issues now. Um, it's starting nice from cold. It's running nicer from cold, from start up. This vehicle had been remapped. Now, whether it wipes the remap off, I don't know. I, I understand it doesn't when they clone from one ECU to another, but it's Pulling better from about a thousand revs. If I just tickle throttle, it will actually pull that where it didn't before. It wouldn't do anything till about 1500 revs. So I think that's the ECU rather than the DPF clean because I don't think the DPF clean has done that much. I don't think there's a lot wrong with it. So what's the point of this video? Well, if anybody's got the same symptoms as me, yeah, with the vehicle refusing to even turn over, engine service now coming up and particularly no glow plug light on the dash as well. I can point it in the right direction, it's likely the ECU. And as the modern saying goes, there are no coincidences. I've always found that to be true on vehicles and I started to doubt myself with that at the beginning of this, of this video and now it's proved itself to be the case. It was the ECU and nothing else causing both problems, the non-start issue and going into limp mode. So, here you go. I hope this was of some use to you.